Okay, so today we're going to take apart an alarm clock radio. And we're going to see what's inside it and how it works. There's basically four systems that we're going to evaluate. There's the power system, there's the alarm clock, or, or the, the clock itself, and the, the structure uh, of the device and in the interface. And then we're also going to take a look at the, the radio. So the first thing is, let's take a look at the power system. So I've already cut apart this plug here. And uh, you can see the prongs, that's where the power comes from. And we've got the, uh, the two wires here. The two wires connect to what's called a transformer. Now in the transformer, there are three key components. So we've got a primary coil, a secondary coil, and an iron core. Now the primary coil is wound around a certain number of times. The secondary coil is wound around fewer times in this particular transformer. So that means it's a step-down transformer. What this transformer does is it converts 120 volt a AC down to 12 or uh, down to 9 volt AC so that the uh, because the components in the alarm clock need lower voltage. So it steps the power down. Now the way it does it is this coil induces a current flow in this coil and the iron core helps to helps that to happen because this coil has fewer turns it's a step down transformer which means that the uh, voltage is less coming out of this part now if there were more turns it would be a step up transformer uh, and the iron core again facilitates that that process it's called electromagnetic induction this coil induces a current flow in this coil so anyway the power travels through the the uh, cable here the, the wire, and it comes to the, the alarm clock. So let's take a look at the housing first of all. It's a it's fairly low cost housing. Uh, it's made out of injection molded plastic. So let's see, uh, see where that power comes in and where it goes. So one of the ways they've been able to reduce the cost of this is they basically just uh, only use one fastener, one uh, one separate fastener. So this is a screw and uh, the more screws you have in things the easier they are oftentimes to put together and take apart but they are also more expensive. Every screw requires either a robot or a person to assemble it and it's an expensive uh, cost adder. So the more screws you can take out the more cost you can reduce. And so all these fasteners in this are, are actually molded into the body panels. So here's a there's a pin or a uh, tab there so we can pull this top part off. Now this part right here is the uh, is the front plate or the uh, the front bezel. It's made out of a uh, tinted acrylic and it's injection molded. There's two parts of the mold that come together. Molted plastic is injected and then this comes out. Uh, the reason it's injection molded is that it creates a very precise part. You can get a nice clean finish and when you produce them in high volumes uh, you can uh, do it for very low cost. So there's that, and the the uh, the reason it's tinted is that it hides the interior components, um, except when the bright lights still show through. Uh, okay, so this is the inside. So let's take that part out. Let's see if we can get that there. There we go. So that's it's all together, and 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 part of the way they've kept the cost low again is there's not a lot of separate pieces that they have to assemble. There's one module they can just plug into this housing. So let's take a look at the housing before we get back to the power system. So the housing uh, was made out; it was injection molded. It's three parts of a mold. So there's one part that comes in here, one part that comes in here, and then there's a core that goes in here. So why uh, one of the ways they've been able to reduce the cost is by molding the buttons into the housing. So there's a little surround around the button and that uh, surround uh, is basically a place where there's no material so it allows the button to flex but there's also little tabs that hold it in place. So all the buttons were molded in and when you push on the button it triggers this pin which triggers a switch below. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, in the back you've got a place for your 9 volt battery so your backup battery if the power goes out to slide in so you push your battery in there and this little tab holds it in place and the battery pushes up against these two little wires right here and so uh, very low cost connector for the battery and they don't need the you know an extra door housing piece on the outside so again reduces cost now the way this was made uh, you saw how the mold came together the plastic was actually injected right here you can see that little place right there there was a piece of plastic that stuck out once this fell out called a sprue and they broke that off and you can see the remnants of that and um, all of the uh, yeah, by having all those features molded into this, you, you reduce cost because you don't have to assemble separate buttons and things like that. All right, let's take a look at the power again. So uh, 
we'll take this top part off here where all the button brackets and things are. Unplug this. All right. So you can see the power comes in right here. And if I take that off, all right. So we have uh, four diodes in, an in a row there. And those diodes function as a bridge rectifier. So they convert the 9 volt AC power that's coming in into DC power. So the AC power flows like this. It's like a sine wave. It's, a, it's flowing in both directions. They convert it and they cut it so that it only flows like that. So they, they take the sine wave and cut it and flip it over so it goes like this. And so it's still a little rough. It's still a little bumpy. And so these capacitors help to smooth that power out because these components don't want uh, power that fluctuates a lot. They want really smooth, consistent, direct current. And that's what, that's what those do. And that's how uh, those capacitors can help out. So let's take a look at the clock system here. So this is our, our clock divider uh, integrated circuit chip. And uh, what it does is it, it takes the, uh, a signal from a, a crystal oscillator, which is a, a piece of quartz crystal that's tuned to a specific frequency. When electricity is, is put into the quartz, uh, it, it, it uh, oscillates at a particular frequency and produces a voltage. So it gives you a very precise division of time. And oftentimes those voltage divisions can be, uh, say, like 60 hertz or 60 times a second. So then what you need to do is once you have all those divisions, you need to be able to uh, separate those divisions into minutes and hours and then send the signal from those divisions in minutes and hours to a display. So those divisions come from here, they go through the ribbon cable, they go to the seven segment display here. And it's called a seven segment display because it has seven different segments in each little uh, piece right there. And they display the, the minutes and the hours. They also, there's LEDs here that display AM and PM. Now, LED stands for light emitting diode. And it's a very uh, efficient, low cost way to display to display the, uh, the time. And so that, the LEDs are mounted inside this little plastic piece right here. And, and, and inside there, there are, there's kind of a light conduit which helps to spread the light out. So an LED is a very intense uh, spot of light. And so this, this housing helps to spread it out. So it makes each segment look completely full and, and the LED lights up the whole segment there. Uh, and so on the back side of that is a uh, printed circuit board. And that helps to... Uh, basically direct the electrical signals coming through the ribbon cable to the right um, seven segment portion. So, you know, it may turn out that it's, uh, you know, 630 and so you want only cer certain segments to light up because of that. We have a jumper here which helps to, you can use jumpers to alter the functionality of, of, the, of the seven segment display. So this one may be uh, program or maybe set up to, to function in a certain way. So this jumper allows you to transfer power to a different part of the display. And then we have these little uh, white spots here. And what that is, is the back of this, this module, the seven segment module has these little pieces of plastic that stick through. And there's a, there's a hot plate that basically pushes on the, those, those pins that stick through and melts them and it holds the uh, plate against the printed circuit board and it's just a cheap way or an inexpensive way to fasten things together it works pretty well so that's the the clock portion and uh, the buttons uh, let's talk a little bit about the interface so so the buttons when you push down on the buttons here they trigger these pins and you can see the pins flex pretty good right here so the pins are connected by these little standoffs and uh, because the standoffs are really thin, they can flex. And so the pin flexes and the pin rests on top of the switch. And when you press the button, the pin moves and the switch gets triggered. So when you want to snooze in the morning, you push this, it shifts the pin and it causes the sleep button to be triggered. And that's kind of how that works. Uh, this is kind of ingenious in another way too because it holds a bunch of different things together. So it's got the pins, it holds the speaker, and it also holds the... Uh, the uh, ferrite rod with the uh, the copper coil around it, which functions as an antenna. So that's an antenna for our AM FM radio. So the signals come from here. We've got a wire broken there. Signals come from here and they go to this thing, which is a, is a setup of four variable capacitors and they help to tune out frequencies we don't want. So when we turn our dial, we can go right to 101.1 FM or 
you know, 5.30 a.m. or which, whichever station we want. This helps us to select those things. Those variable capacitors help us to filter out unwanted frequencies. And these two things, they're called uh, inductor coils, and they can be uh, used to uh, oscillate at a particular frequency uh, if they're coupled with a, a capacitor. And uh, that can be useful in performing uh, radio functions as well. And this guy right here is a... Uh, it's a, a, a radio chip, it's an IC chip that helps to, to demodulate or to uh, separate the, the music or the, the signal that you want from the actual wave. So AM is, is amplitude modulation, so that means that the wave is, is changed in, in its height. And FM is frequency modulation, so that means that the wave is changed in, its, in, in how often it occurs in order to embed the signal that we get to, to listen to as, as uh, radio sound. So this chip basically decodes that and says, this is the original wave and then this is the embedded signal. And that's able to be uh, then sent to our speaker right here. So uh, before it gets to the speaker, it goes past this variable resistor right here, which is also called a potentiometer. And so when we turn that, it changes the resistance in the circuit, and it either increases or decreases the volume, and increases or decreases the amount of power running to these wires. And this one actually has come undone. Uh, but So the wires come here, and, they, and there's a copper coil and a magnet. And when the power is run to the uh, copper coil and the magnet, it causes the co paper cone to vibrate. And that produces a uh, pressure wave, and we interpret that as sound. And so that's how that works. And then right here you can see there's two different switches here. We've got a switch that controls whether we're in AM or FM, and then another switch that just sort of uh, lets us select different functions like you know turn it turn the uh, alarm clock off or to have it set to buzzer instead of a radio and and things like that and um, you can also see this right here that's a resistor and that resists electric uh, current flow and that can be useful because it helps to uh, uh, prevent too much power from flowing to certain components on the board and, and things like that. This is a transistor these things are transistors they can function as switches um, and these guys right here are filters, and they can help to reduce uh, noise or electromagnetic interference, uh, and they can help to clean up. They're probably used in the radio circuit here to help to clean up the signal. And on the back here, you can see, again, these prongs connect to the battery. And this is the printed circuit board here on the back, and that's uh, basically it's a thin layer of copper that's been applied to this fiberglass board and then a, uh, uh, a chemical was used, uh, they, they used basically a photoemulsion process which is like a similar uh, to, to remove, uh, to shine, they, they shine a light on it and they use the photoemulsion process to remove uh, certain areas of the copper and keep other areas. And so they'll use an acid or a material to etch away the areas that aren't protected and um, those result in copper traces. And so those copper traces are basically very well ordered little tiny wires that are very flat and they allow us to connect all these different components in a very small space very efficiently. So we can just push the components, these are called through hole components, through holes and then solder them on the back and then they're all wired up together and we don't have to worry about a lot of messy wires and things not being connected correctly. And you can see there's different components, uh, small components on the back, the little surface mount resistors and things like that. So that's a uh, that's our alarm clock radio, and those are the insides. Hope you've enjoyed it.